Hello and welcome to livealittlehigher.com. This week we read Parasha Pinhas and as we left last week with Parasha Balak at the end of the Parasha, uh, this horrible episode in which the, the Moabite princesses came to the camp of the Jewish people and they enticed the men to have illicit relationships with them and to bow down to their idol, Baal Peor, it caused a lot of uh, pain for the Jewish people. It brought uh, a plague, which killed 24,000 men. And it wasn't until Pinhas, Pinhas, who was uh, the son of Elazar, the grandson of Aaron HaKohen, he came to the camp and he uh, did a zealot, zealot act in which the prince of the tribe of Shimon was having a relationship with the princess of the Moabites, uh, Cosby, and in the middle of the act, he put a spade between them and killed them in the act. And so there's a lot of confusion in this parasha in which it's been discussed if what he did was okay, was right, did he deserve the death penalty or not the death penalty because he took these two people's lives in his own hands, but we know from the from the pasuk it says, eh, "Pinhas ben Elazar ben Aaron Hakohen has turned my anger away from Bene Israel by his zealously avenging me among them, so that I did not destroy the Bene Israel because of my seal. Therefore, say, I hereby give him my covenant of peace." It shall be for him and for his descendants after him as an eternal covenant of Kehuna, because he was zealous for his God and atoned for Bene Israel. So we see that amongst all this confusion, God tells Moshe Rabbeinu that Pinhas was did nothing wrong, that on the contrary, his act was a zealous act in which he avenged the name of Hashem. And, uh, and because of this, he was given the Kehuna of of priesthood, the Kehuna is priesthood, and from him come all the Kohen uh, that come after after Pinhas. Because before Pinhas, uh, the Kohen were uh, they were chosen by God. So Aaron HaKohen was chosen by God to be the, the Kohen Gadol, and then his son Elazar, and so on. So after Pinhas, all the descendants. Uh, from there on would be considered a uh, Kohanim. So these Pesukim are puzzling. Pinhas wasn't the only one to turn Hashem's anger away from Ben Israel. Uh, we see through the story of the Exodus of the people, of the Jewish people wandering in the desert for 40 years, that Moshe Rabbeinu many times, not one time like Pinhas, many, many times, uh, was able to uh, make God for, forgive the Jewish people and make the Jewish people atone for different sins that they committed. And why, why, the question is why he wasn't given such a, such a, a merit of being like giving him the, the, the kehuna, the priesthood to, to Moshe HaKohen. Not only that, uh, not even his descendants were able to follow in his footsteps. So uh, after him came Yehoshua ben Nun, he was not his son, he was his student, but his sons didn't follow in Moshe's ways. So let's see what, what, what the Hasidu teaches us about this, what it tells us about what really, why Hashem gave Pinhas the Kehuna and not to Moshe. And, uh, and, and why they were treated differently. So the, the Rebbe, the Rebbe Lubavitch, in one of his sihas, he teaches that the answer, according to Hasidut, it, it, is, it says it is true that both Moshe and, and, and Ping has merited uh, <clears throat> to save the Jewish people in, 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 in their lifetime. Moshe took the spiritual route. The difference was that Moshe took the spiritual route and um, and Pinhas, on the other hand, he took the the physical world. So they both served God in different ways. One way was Moshe's way, which was bringing heaven heaven down to earth. Pinhas' way was bringing earth up to heaven. So we see that the, these two different approaches created different uh, results. So the, this, it says that um, the difference between Moshe Rabbeinu and Pinhas 
is that every time that Moshe needed to Hashem to intervene on a certain aspect of the Jewish people, he would pray to God and God would answer his prayer, his tefillah, and he would abort the decree. And then Pinchas, on the other hand, we see that he turned away his, the wrath of God by doing something physical, which caused the situation below to change. So he killed Simri and Cosby, arousing the Jewish people to do Teshuvah. So this distinction is reflected in the type of a Mesirut Nefesh self-sacrifice that is, this, the, that is demonstrated both by, by Moshe and, um, and, and Pinhas. Moshe was willing to give up his spiritual life, the life of his neshama for the sake, as the, as the Pasuk says, but if not, erase me now from your book, which you have written. So when the Jewish people were, were sinning with the golden calf, and Moshe Rabbeinu was coming down from the mountain with the luchot, with the ta tablets, with the Ten Commandments, when he saw what was going on, what he did was that he threw the, the, the tablets into the, into the ground, the, the, the Luchot, and he broke them. And this was something that he did intentionally, because he, if he would have come down with this Luchot, it would have been seen like the Jewish people were being um, a, a unfaithful to Hashem, just like 40 days after they were given the Torah, like suddenly they have another God. And they, this would have actually erased them from the book. Uh, so, so it was such a horrible thing that when Moshe went up to the, to, to the mountain again to bring down the second set of tablets, God told Moshe, why don't we just like get rid of all these people? They're rebels, they're, 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 they don't get it. Let's get rid of them and let's create a new nation. And Moshe Rabbeinu said to Hashem, I don't wanna be part of your new book. Like if you're gonna destroy these people, I don't wanna be part of your book. Just take me out with them. I don't wanna have anything to do with that. But Pinhas, on the other hand, literally risked his life for them, as Hassal re relayed the sages, that the people of, of, of Shevet Shimon, the tribe of Shimon, wanted to kill Pinhas and he was saved by a miracle. So Moshe and Pinhas represents two different paths in one's uh, avodah, in one's service to God, and to influence and sanctify our environments. And both, both ways are very important. We need both of them. Uh, mm -hmm. Moshe represents a top-down, right, approach, drawing down the, the light from, from heaven, and by praying, by, by beseeching Hashem, he's bringing down that prayer, that light, which causes the darkness down here to be dissipated. Pin has, on the other hand, represents a method of up, down, uh, down up, which is uh, ch changing the physical world from within, refining it and raising it to a higher spiritual level. So one example of this is like Shema Israel. When you do Shema Israel, Shema Israel, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Ehad, you do the D, it goes long. When you're proclaiming the Shema Israel, what you're pro proclaiming really is that God is one. There's nothing separate from God. Everything is Hashem. So when you're doing Shema and you move your head, you go north, south, east, west, up and down, you're bringing down the light of God into all the, the, the corners of the, of the world. And then when you say the rest of the Shema, Ve'ahavta et Adonai Eloeha, um, I, 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 I promise to love my Lord with my heart, with my soul, with my, with my might. And, and it continues saying that it's going to teach uh, Hashem's ways in the world, and it's going to teach it to his children, and it's going to put mezuzahs on the doorpost, and the, the tzitzits, and all this. This is the, the down-up approach. So in the relationship with Hashem, we really need both. We need a relationship in which we do things like pray, in which we're praying and we're driving, bringing down that light to the world. And then this is a world of action, the world of Asiya, which is a world of action in which we come to create an effect in the world. We've come to do changes in this world uh, by doing the mitzvot, by fulfilling the mitzvot. So here we see that the difference between these two approaches is that the influence that comes from heaven down to earth 
it, it, it's a beautiful thing, but in reality, it's not everlasting. Um, a person can have like an incredible aha moment in his life, a, a moment of inspiration, or Hashem creates a miracle for him and he's like, oh, taken back, like he can't even breathe by the incredible thing that happened. And this is important because it gives a person the strength to connect to Hashem. But just as it comes, it goes. Inspiration is not everlasting. It, it's, a, it's a moment in your life that you have a, such an inspiration. You listen to a shiur, you, you go to, um, to Israel and you get inspired and all these things that create all this inspiration or you go to Shabbat dinner at the home and you see how they live, you get inspired. But if you don't take the action, if you don't do the job down here to, to, to bring that action, in, that inspiration into action, then it's gonna go away. I remember many years ago, we rented an apartment in the old city in Jerusalem, and we had the, 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 the sechut, the merit, to have this view of the Kotel of the Wailing Wall all day long. We were, would sit there and look at it all day. And um, there's a guy in, in, the, in the old city that he puts people to go to homes for Shabbat. Uh, it's usually kids that come from birthright and backpackers, and all these uh, Jewish kids that he meets in the Kotel, and he organizes them for ha to have meals in, uh, in, the, in the homes of people in the old city and in Jerusalem. And so he used to come and knock at the door in this apartment where I stayed, and he would ask me, can you have five kids this Shabbat, six kids next Shabbat, and I would say yes. And I remember once uh, a, a, a boy came from all these kids that came, and he stayed to talk to us after lunch, and he says, look, I am a, I'm a Jew. I've never had contact with my Judaism apart from going to Sunday schools, which were boring. And I had a bar mitzvah, but really I never had the, the Jewish experience. And suddenly I'm here in Israel in birthright and I can stop crying. Something happened to me. I'm in the, in the hotel and I'm looking at this wall and something has just, something happened to me. And, um, and he says, how can I do when I go back home to keep this flame alive? Because yes, here I can feel it everywhere. But once I get back to my house and, and I'm going back to my routines and my regular life with my regular friends, how am I going to keep this going? So my husband very wisely told him, well, you have to change your lifestyle. Like if you're going to go back to your lifestyle, your regular lifestyle, this, what you're feeling here, is not going to stay with you. It's going to go. But if Hashem gave you that gift to have this feeling of awe, of awesomeness, of, of, of God, of reverence, and love for your Yiddishkeit, then once you go home, you have to go to a, to a shul, look for a rabbi, start uh, keeping kosher, start keeping Shabbat. You have to keep it going because if you don't do that, then this will go away. So this is what, what this, um, these teachings are telling us, is that to be able to bring that light from heaven down to earth and keep it here, we have to keep doing so it can stay. And so since Pinhas Ak was in the bottom of category, the effect of which is eternal, he was rewarded with an eternal covenant, and it shall be for him and for his descendants after him the breeze of the Keuna. So, to learn from this, what we take away from this, is that there's people who are very passionate when it comes to Ruknios. There's people who are very spiritual, very spiritual, very passionate. They love to pray, they love to learn. They're very connected to the spiritual aspect of, of their Judaism. And, and then you have another type of Jew that is more connected to the physical part. And both of them are very important. You cannot be a spiritual person without, uh, uh, with, with, without, without engaging with, with the physical world because Hashem gave us a physical world to elevate it. And that's the purpose of a Jew in this world is to take the food and make it kosher and have a meal in your house and do blessings on that food to bring it the light of that food back to 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 shaman to heaven so the, the the thing here is that it's neither one or the other it's not a person that is so spiritual so spiritual that has no feeling whatsoever of the of the material world and also not such a person that everything is the material world and has no 
sense of connection to God. So there's a story of the Kotzka Rebbe, I remember, that a very wealthy man came to him and he said that he was going to be very proud of him because he has, was becoming very spiritual. And the Kotzka Rebbe said, like, explain to me, I don't know what you're saying. He says, well, I decided that during the week I'm only going to eat bread and, and water. That's all I'm going to have. And then Shabbat, I'll give myself the pleasure of Shabbat. And the Rebbe said to him, you're, you're, you're completely cuckoo. You don't get it. If a person like you has all this money, you should enjoy the material world because once a person comes to you asking for tzedakah, a poor person comes asking for tzedakah, that he's hungry, what are you going to give them? Water and, 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 and bread. That's not going to suffice for that person. You need to eat so you know what a, a, a person that is hungry wants to eat. So the same way, uh, we need to have a balance between the spiritual and the, and, the, and the physical. And it says here that these lifestyles are not always sustainable. True, while one is occupied with affairs of the neshama, of the soul, or even with the avodah, with the service of the, of the physical, but staying in his own bubble, so to speak, he is indeed in a wonderful, wonderful spiritual healthy space, but then when he's forced to deal with the world, he can, he can deal with the world. So you have a woman that prays Tehillim all day. She's all day with the Tehillim here, but the kids need the mother to feed them, to bathe them, to put them to bed, to make homework with them. This woman will be unable to do it because she's so in the spiritual world, she won't be able to connect to her kids. So in order for one's service of Hashem to be sustainable, it is crucial that together with the inner spiritual service of one must also deal with the outside, both with his personal outside as well with his internal, um, with his um, internal uh, inside. So and utilize them for the purpose of Torah and mitzvot. So it, it's not a coincidence, therefore, that this parasha of Pinchas is always read on the onset of the three weeks between the 17th of Tammuz and the 9th of Av, which are three weeks in which the Jewish people are uh, remembering and uh, honoring the, the, the destruction of the two temples. It's a time of the year in which we are, we are conscious of, 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 the, of the lack of having our, our, our temple back and how this creates so much pain in the Jewish world. This exile is unbearable. And in the 17th of Tammuz, for example, which is a fast day, we are commemorating the breaching of the, of the walls of the first temple. And a person would think, okay, what does it mean, the breach? Why, why are we crying things that happened 2,000 and something years ago? Why, how are we related to this? And today we can say we know what a breaching of a wall means. We had it on October 7th, a breach wall, what happened? 1,200 uh, people dead and 300 and something people uh, held hostages. And, and we see, we can see, we can relate to it. So it's not a coincidence that this parasha begins these three weeks because what it's telling us and what it's, re it's really empowering us to do is that it's reminding us that there's a way to really transform the world. That if uh, the Jewish people are fasting, it's because every generation that the temple is not revealed is like if that, that generation lost its temple. We are right now like our temple was destroyed. And this year more, we feel it with more, with more intensity. So the, we see that the, the bleak whiz of the Jewish history into days of feasting and, and will tr transform, these days of fasting will transform into days of feasting and rejoicing with a true and complete redemption um, with Messiah. So we know that this, this, um, this is particularly uh, true when we learn about Pinhas, which he set an example for all times. It's an eternal example for us to show that, which showed us how to bring this transformation. Obviously, we're not going to kill anybody. This is not what we have to do. It's, uh, it's, it was a, a one act in history, which was uh, exactly in the exact moment. Uh, if it would have been that these two people were walking in the street, he couldn't have done, done, done it. Uh, but 
we can learn from Pihas that sell a tree towards Hashem, that we take God very seriously and that we don't do things in this world that are going to taint his name. And in that way, uh, whenever possible, we can do something that will bring light to the world through our actions. We should not really even wait one second for that because the, the, the greater uh, the task, the greater the light. And rather, like being has, one must rise to that moment and with no hesitation. Uh, the Jewish people right now are in a moment of, that, of, of zealousness, of where we have to really defend God. And in the in, in the in the light of the world, and it's a war of, 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 of darkness versus light. And sometimes we get sidetracked, and we cannot forget. And just as God granted Pinchas the soul of Eliyahu Hanavi to carry this mission, likewise God will infuse every one of us, every one of us, with the necessary spiritual tools and strength to be able to actually come to bring the, the redemption. So I wish you a blessed week, and remember, live a little higher. Thank you.